This video is powered by YouTube memberships and Patreon. See the link in the description and learn how you can support videos like this. 15 years and 1200 miles from where Claude found himself free from prison, another man was due his release. This is Tommy Vassetti. This is Vice City. It is 1986. A place that for Tommy is very far from home. It has different cars, different people, different criminals than he's used to. But Vice City is a place that Tommy will get to know intimately in time. Tommy's not from down here in Florida. He's from up north in Liberty City, but he's not been there in a long while. 15 years, in fact. Tommy is recently paroled, and instead of being able to settle back into the city he knows, he's been sent to a city he doesn't by his boss, Sonny Ferrelli, the head of the Ferrelli crime family. A decade and a half ago, Tommy was sent on a job that was meant to be easy, but instead of finding one man, 11 turned up. They knew he was coming. Whoever sent them thought 11 men would be enough, but Tommy was the only man to emerge and earning a new name on the street, the Harwood Butcher. The police caught up with him eventually and Tommy would never truly find out who arranged the ambush, but he had his suspicions. Tommy Vassetti, ha, <laughs> shit. Didn't they, they'd never let him out. When Sonny Ferrelli up in Liberty City found out Tommy was being released, he made a decision. We treat him like an old friend and keep him busy out of town, okay? Out of sight, out of mind. Tommy was a bad penny, forgotten for 15 years, and Sonny could not fathom a place for him in the enterprise in Liberty. So to push the problem down the road and to perhaps even expand the mob's reach, he is to send him 1,200 miles south to Vice City, a place he has long thought of as a natural extension to his empire. But Vice City is awash with drugs, a revenue stream long ignored by the Ferrellis, but... Times are changing. The families can't keep their backs turned while our enemies reap the rewards. We send someone down to do the dirty work for us and cut ourselves a nice, quiet slice, okay? So by sending Tommy, Sonny could turn the problem into the solution. Worst case scenario, the problem goes away. Give it a few months, then we go down. Pay him a little visit, right? And to meet Tommy and his mobster chaperones, Harry and Lee, is Ferrelli gang associate, Ken Rosenberg. Hey, 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 great, hey. Ken, a local lawyer with friends in both high and low places. Well, uh, I'm gonna drive you guys to the meet, okay? Tommy has not been thrust into Vice City idly. His first task has been set up for him. Imagined by Sonny, curated by Ken, and up to Tommy to execute. Tommy is to complete a deal. He has the money. The Vance family have the coke. Victor Vance is flown into Vice City docks via helicopter, piloted by his brother, Lance. 100% pure grade A Colombian, my friend. It should have been simple. Both parties want what the other has, and perhaps a continued partnership could form, but a third party has different ideas. Oh, shit. Victor and mobsters Harry and Lee dead. Lance Vance in his chopper retreats. Tommy's 15-year incarceration bookended by another job gone awry, but like his previous job, he emerges unscathed, this time with the lawyer, Ken Rosenberg. Who are these attackers clad in balaclavas? How did they know the deal was going down? The pair head for Washington Beach. By the look of the petrified Ken, he can't be in on it, and he takes refuge at his office in Hotel Harrison. Tommy at his lodgings on Ocean Drive. The worst possible beginning for Tommy in Vice City. He has a call to make. Hello, Sonny. Tommy! Tommy, it's been too long. So how'd the deal go down? Look, Sonny, we were set up. The deal was an ambush. Harry and Lee are dead. You better be kidding me, Tommy! Tell me you still got the money. No, Sonny. I don't have the money. That was my money, Tommy! My money! You have my personal assurance that I'm gonna get you your money back, and the drugs, and I'm gonna mail you the dicks of those responsible. Hey, I already know that. 
If it was anybody else, you'd be dead. I'll be in touch. If Tommy wasn't on the hook for Sonny's money and drugs and the burden of carving a piece of Vice City for the Ferrellis, he might have taken a moment to appreciate where he is now. This is not the dark, dusty streets of St. Mark's or his cramped prison cell. This is Ocean Drive, which runs the course of Ocean Beach, frequented by pleasure seekers, lined with hotels and shops, a place of relaxation and recreation. Ken had booked Tommy a fine room in the modernist style Ocean View Hotel. This would be Tommy's home for a while and he would come to appreciate it. A place to take pause and comfort from what is in store for him in Vice City. I'm the Patient Wolf and I'm a video game storyteller. This is the first in a series of videos charting the adventures of Tommy Vassetti in Vice City. Members and patrons get to view these videos weeks in advance. Support the channel and the extensive work it takes to produce them. See the link below. If not, stay subscribed and notified for my continuing journey through the worlds of Grand Theft Auto up to the release of GTA 6. I'm the Patient Wolf and this is the story of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Tommy takes one restless night to meditate on what happened. But with the dawn of a new day, it's time to get to work. First, a debrief at K. Rosenberg & Co. Tommy is laser focused, Ken still shaken. I have been sitting in this chair all night. This is a disaster. We are so screwed, man. Now what the hell are we gonna do? Shut up, sit down, relax. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. You're gonna find out who took our cocaine and then we're gonna kill them. Ken knows where to start. There's this retired colonel, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. He's the one that helped me set up this deal well away from Vice City's established thugs. Ken has an invite to a party held by Cortez today on his yacht in the bay. And all of Vice City's big players are gonna be there, okay? A chance to quiz the colonel, meet the movers and shakers of the city and perhaps pick up a trail on these masked men. But first, he has to do something he's never really felt comfortable with. Dress up for the occasion. Stop by Raphael's. Tell him I sent you. He'll make you look respectable. Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with them? Is this me? Nice ass, baby. No, my bike! The Colonel's yacht, docked at Pier 2, is the most eminent party spot of the moment. Buenas noches! I just want my merchandise. It's an unfortunate set of circumstances for all involved. Of course, I have initiated my own lines of inquiry, but such a delicate matter will take time. Ken trusts the Colonel. Tommy trusts no one yet. That will take his own time-consuming inquiry. Juan Cortez is often bathed in exclusivity, in his surroundings, the food he eats, and the company he keeps. This opulence has rubbed off on his socialite daughter, Mercedes, who acquaints Tommy with the guest list. Amongst the big names of Congressman Alex Shrub, porn star Candy Sucks, rock star Jez Torrent, film director Steve Scott, and football star BJ Smith are names that Mercedes does not mention. But these names will prove vital to Tommy for the work yet to come. Future acquaintances, perhaps friends, British music man Kent Paul, and property tycoon Avery Carrington. Mercedes also points out Cortez's captain. That sleeping sweat gland is Papa's right hand kid, Gonzalez. And arriving late to the party, Vice City's premier drug lord, the leader of the Colombian cartel. Who's the loudmouth? Ricardo Diaz. He's Mr. Cope. And a firm acquaintance of the Colonel. How do we find you? <laughs> Our business is very dry. A time for rewarding one's friends and liquidating one's enemies, amigo. Mercedes! Oh, I was just taking my friend back into town. Another time, Ricardo. Let's get out of here. Tommy's seen enough, glad to move away from a scene that has never really been him. But at least he had the broad strokes of the city in his mind and the detail would be fleshed out in good time. Will you be working for my father? Maybe. Before conferring with Ken, he drops Mercedes Cortez off at the pole position adult lounge in Ocean Beach. See you around, handsome. 
Mercedes and Tommy will become good friends over the next few months and be a help to each other with what's important to them. For those stories, check the links down in the description. What did you find out? That there are more criminals in this town than in prison. When asking Ken's opinion on where they should start, it's one of the names Mercedes does not mention that Ken suggests first. Kent Paul, some music industry slimeball. He's got his nose so far up most of Vice City's ass that if anybody knows the whereabouts of 20 keys of coke, it's this guy. I'll go pay him a visit. Kent Paul frequents the Malibu Club north from Ocean Drive in Vice Point. Vice City's premier dancing spot where the brightest and most beautiful go. That's why Kent is here. Yeah, I'm the governor, Andy. I'll sort things out. You know what I mean? I'll treat you. Whatever you want, I'll get you, girl. You're lost, honey. Tommy may not look like a people person, but he is a great reader of them, and he is able to recognize the quickest approach to elicit information from someone like Kent. What do you know about him? There's some chef come trumpet shifter who deals that kitchen of Hotel and Ocean Drive. He's been looking real pleased with himself lately. You could go and check him out. I will. Yeah, that's right. Go and walk away, you mug. I knock you spark out. Give me a drink. Kent will prove to be a constant source of information for Tommy over the coming months. With Kent's Cockney dialect translated, Tommy waits for the coke dealing chef to take a break behind the hotel and makes a move on his first real lead since the attack. Hey, what you looking at? You better start talking. Hey, make me, you prick. Tommy knows when to start a fight. It's stopping them that he's always had trouble with. Idiot! It's how he escaped those 11 men in Liberty City. He becomes a beast unleashed until he's the only one standing. Oh, way to go, tough guy. Beat him to a pulp. That should make him real chatty. You want some too? This is Lance, Lance Vance. Tommy and he have never met, but Lance was piloting the helicopter at the gate crashed drug deal. Not only did he lose out on the deal, but he lost his brother Victor that day too. He was now in Vice City for answers and recompense, and he sees a kindred spirit in Tommy. The way I see it, we two hombres in a strange town. We need to watch each other's back. My back's just fine, brother. You sure about that? Here, take this. Follow me. Tommy won't agree right now. He's used to working alone, but Lance sees teaming up with Tommy as the quickest route to answers. Lance will be back. I'm gonna go see what I can dig up. I'll be watching you, Tommy. Although Tommy failed to extract information from the chef, he did receive something useful. The use of his cellular telephone. These things aren't cheap, but this cell's true value is far greater than Tommy would first realize. Hey, uh, Leo, I think we got a buyer for Diaz's merchandise. Leo's gone away for a while. He left me in charge. Screw you, man. Diaz is a name Tommy recognizes, obviously working with the chef here to shift his coke. But could it be Tommy's coke they were trying to shift? He'll keep it in mind. The chef's name was Leo Teal, and his contacts that would call on this telephone would prove lucrative. Other players in the city would pay well for a soldier like Tommy. The Cuban Umberto Rubina. You kill Leo? You must have big cojones. Wanna work for me? The Haitian Auntie Poulet. Come and check me kitchen sometime, okay, Tommy? And the mysterious Mr. Black. Your next shot is taped under the phone. These stories coming very soon. Details down in the description. So the trail for answers is still cold and the Liberty City mob are still breathing down Tommy's neck. And on top of that, they have other chores for him to do. If a Vice City jury is allowed to deliberate unscathed, then... Ferelli's cousin Giorgio gets five years for fraud. You gotta take these guys out! I understand. Help the jury change their minds. Tommy's skills of persuasion have been valuable to the Ferelli mob back in Liberty City and are put to good use here. Tommy enjoys his work, but paydays like this won't keep him in vice for very long. Tommy needs money to subsist. Clothes, board, guns. Ken will need his cut. Business is not so hot for him and his expenses. While they wait for leads on the stolen coke, they may as well keep busy. Tommy, this is Avery Carrington. I believe you met at the party. Avery is a property developer with a voracious appetite. 
he is always looking for prime land to develop more property like his housing complex, Shady Acres. And his latest tool to get this land is Tommy Vassetti. Anyone that won't sell, Tommy is there to enact plan B. To put companies out of business. Shady Acres. I'm Everett Carey. Shady Acres is an incredible, upscale, state-of-the-art, top-notch condominium developer. Tommy steers people towards sound decision-making. Persuasion's my forte. Setting charges in buildings. And if that office development would have faced sudden and insurmountable structural problems... Then the way would be clear for Avery to offer more and to make more. Shady Acres. Happiness is worth the price. Shady Acres. Avery Carrington was not only a property magnate, but a mentor to his understudy, a young Donald Love. Now, Donald, you just shut up and listen, and you might learn something. Donald Love would learn a lot from Avery. His story, told 15 years later in Liberty City. Tommy is always rewarded for his work, and along with work from Avery, jobs he gains through Leo Sal, and other odd jobs to fill in the gaps, Tommy is slowly building up a war chest for what may lie ahead. All the while keeping his ear to the ground for Sonny's stolen money and Lance's stolen drugs, because Sonny won't forget about it. I'm looking for the money, Sonny. Don't worry. Don't be an unreliable person, Tommy, please. Do us both a favor. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Tommy heads back to Pier 2 after hearing from Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. I want you to know me and my people are doing their utmost to get to the bottom of it. You can find me at the boat, huh? Cortez has made a discovery. Uh, I am ashamed to admit that one of the causes of our mutual problem appears to have been the loose tongue of a man I used to trust. The Colonel's right-hand man, Gonzalez, let it slip about the deal he set up. This was the leak. This was the reason the deal was attacked. There are no details yet on who he told, but a once trusted man is now marked. We'll be at his penthouse, half drunk probably. Use this. It's not important to Tommy how he gets the job done. Killing is a means to an end, but he'll gladly use any method requested to satisfy the client. I'm gonna shut that big mouth of yours! But Tommy will enjoy this one. If it wasn't for Gonzalez, he wouldn't be in this mess. I'll pay you double, Tommy! Double! But you're squealing. No one cares, Fatso. Although satisfying to kill a rat, they are no closer to the identity of the perpetrator. This isn't getting me any closer to my money. Tommy, my friend, you are not in liberty now. Here, we do things differently. Not too different, it seems. Doing countless favors for bosses for scant reward. Tommy is used to that. But more time mixing in the criminal underworld opens up more avenues and more opportunity. It's while doing a job for Cortez that he is formally introduced to Ricardo Diaz. You must be Cortez's new gun until more gainful opportunities arise. Tommy is charged with overseeing a drug deal and to keep Diaz safe should the deal go awry. And along for the ride is Lance. Lance, true to his word, has been watching from the sidelines, waiting for his moment to impress. He still dearly wants to join forces with the capable Tommy to track down the man who killed his brother. Look, you want to do something other than just shadowing me everywhere? Why don't you come along and show me if you're any use? Lance Vance has been doing his own investigations and has his suspicions on a suspect, but he needs more time and more info before he'll share with Tommy. For now, they have a job to do. They'll be here any minute. We both better get a good vantage point. Okay, I'll take the balcony, you get the roof across the yard. Ricardo Diaz is the most powerful drug baron in Vice City. His Colombian cartel is responsible for the vast majority of the cocaine that changes hands, and his value has skyrocketed because of it. Starfish Island is home to many a fine mansion, but Diaz has the biggest. His Colombian cartel has competition from many other gangs, but sometimes they work together for mutual benefit. The deal today is with the Cubans. I am next in line, man. The Cubans have designs on the crown, but so, to the Haitians. 
the Haitians crash the deal, Tommy and Lance are here to stem the tide. My money! Chase that dickhead now! Tommy reacts to chase down the fleeing drugs. Drugs recovered and Ricardo Diaz safe. I live! Take heads, and it's all down to you. What is your name? Tommy. I see you soon, amigo, I think. Tommy Vassetti has an in with the biggest trafficker of coke in the city, and Cortez thinks it's here he may find answers to his stolen coke. Although I'm starting to think that Diaz was responsible for our unfortunate loss. What makes you say that? One does not wave accusations at a man like Diaz. I'm merely thinking out loud. No evidence, just strong suspicions. Diaz must be investigated slowly and carefully. Juan Garcia Cortez proved to be useful for Tommy. He found the leak in Gonzalez, introduced him to suspect number one, the drug lord Diaz. Tommy would help Cortez in further jobs too, but there comes a time in every criminal's life when they have to set sail for safer waters. Tommy would help Cortez do that. Tommy carves a way for Cortez to escape Vice City, one friend down, but one drug lord richer. It was only a matter of time until Diaz requested his presence. Everyone needs a guy like Tommy. Will you not come see me? i make you real rich. Tommy arrives at the grand entrance of Diaz's mansion, bought and paid for with cocaine, and it's quite clear to Tommy, not all of that powder ends up on the streets. Yeah! Yeah! Don't be hard! I'll chop your head off! Uh, who is this dickhead? Tommy Versetti. You remember me. You work for me now! I work for money. You work for me now! I work Shut for up! Money. It doesn't matter who they are. Their station in business or in crime, Tommy would never usually put up with being spoken to like this. Sonny has sailed close to the wind in the past, but Tommy senses he's close to answers. He's willing to lump the discourtesy of a jumped up junkie. He will do his work and he will bide his time. There's one thing for certain. Tommy cannot believe a man like this has held power for so long. Though Diaz still has men who follow him. They litter the grounds of his mansion, waiting idly to do his bidding but Tommy can see Diaz is unhinged by his addiction and ready to topple. Bro, yo! It is my favorite El Burro movie, it's die. What else can I do? Not being able to relax with his favorite pornographer, El Burro, a deep concern to Diaz. El Burro would have a glittering career himself, both on and off the screen. Catch the story of the porn star cum gangster, El Burro, down in the description. Tommy is enlightened by what he has seen of Diaz. If this is the best Vice City has to offer, this is gonna be easy. He is in with the Colombian cartel, and like the rest of his men, he waits at the Diaz residence to be called. Tommy was struck by what he saw here. He was amazed at the opulence of this side of the city, the mansion, the grounds, the view across the water. But Tommy was a simple guy. He didn't need much. He would dress up when needed, but preferred his Hawaiian shirt. I like this shirt. This mansion is great and everything, but he preferred the simplicity of his ocean drive room. But there is one thing Tommy did enjoy. Cars. After 15 years inside, Tommy loved being behind the wheel again, and doing jobs for the players of VC has driven some great cars. While working for Cortez, there was always a cheetah for him to use. Now at the mansion, Diaz's Infernus was available to him. While working with his connections in Vice City, he had opportunity to drive many a vehicle, as well as those he could boost. It seems car crime, fashion crime, drugs, everything is on the rise. Bro, Esther, what are you doing driving like that? We are all a little confused and really should stay at home, lock the doors and forget about everything as quickly as possible. But more than anything, he loved to cruise the city on two wheels. He cannot resist a motorbike whenever one presents itself. Let's take a break. Don't go away. I'm begging you. <laughs> Emotion. But it was on four wheels, in the Infernus, that Tommy would start his next job for Diaz. The Colombians work with the street wannabes on occasion, 
a small but ambitious outfit happy to assist in trafficking for the Colombians for a slice. But their leader is suspected of taking more than his share. Oh shit! Tommy follows him on two wheels, continues under fire on four, and finds the gang's hideout. Back to Starfish Island for more instruction. That gang place is a fortress at ground level. So Quentin here, Quentin, Quentin! They'll fly you over the area. Eradicate them! To Diaz, this is Quentin. To Tommy, it is of course, Lance Vance. Lance has done his own work to infiltrate the Colombian cartel and under a false name has earned Ricardo Diaz's trust. And Lance has come to the same conclusion Tommy has. Knowing this city and its players like they now do, only Diaz has the contacts and muscle to crash a deal like they did. They have their man. Hey, I've been asking around. It's obvious that Diaz jumped the deal and iced my brother. And he'll kill you too. I can take Diaz. No, listen to me. I'll handle Diaz. He's beginning to trust me. Tommy has always been in two minds about Lance since he met him. On the one hand, he's glad to have someone around with dovetailed goals, but Tommy knows the best way to topple Diaz is with patience and a cool head. Lance has neither, but he does have the flying skills here. So take out as many guns as you can. giving Tommy an elevated advantage to take out the guards and sentries of the street wannabes hideout before mopping up the interior to reach Diaz's money, making him whole, gaining his trust, Tommy biding his time. In that time, Tommy would undertake more work for Diaz. I want that boat! Stealing the latest in high-powered speedboats for his drug trafficking enterprise, the Squalo Mark II prized from the hands of the Costa Ricans. And with that boat, Tommy oversees trafficking the inventory with some help from Lance. Lance continues to wear down Tommy, to be by his side through this thing that must be done, planting himself as eager help at every opportunity. I'm just saying, you need to let me in there, my man. Lance is persistent. But any trust issues Tommy already harbored have been confounded by the series of betrayals he has been subject to and the characters he deals with in this business every day. He wants to let him in though and knows what must be done. They have long since known the mastermind behind the drug deal attack. Diaz must die. And Lance wants his finger on the trigger by Tommy's side, but Tommy senses his impatience. We can do this thing, you and me, no problem. We're going to have to do it, because otherwise we're going to be dead, Lance. We're in too far now. Tommy knew Lance was chomping at the bit to take down Diaz, and he knew he'd need to keep an eye on him, but he didn't think Lance would do what would come next. While Tommy was formulating his end game, he gets a call from Kent Paul, the Malibu frequenting fixer of Vice City. All right, me old China, it's Paul. I might have a little result for you, but I need to speak to you in person. Lance has moved without him. You know that wanker Diaz? He's got your boy Lance. Word is you might try to jump. You didn't jump high enough if you know what I mean. Where did he take him? Keep your party on. They got him across town to jump ya. Translated from Cockney, Lance tried to kill the king and missed. He had been caught alive and subject to torturous interrogation. Their cover is blown. Tommy works through the Colombians at the junkyard off Little Haiti and saves his partner. A partnership he agreed to against his better judgment. There goes my careful planning blown to shit. Thanks to you. You screwed up real good, Lance. He killed my brother. What do you expect me to do, mow his lawns? We're gonna have to take out that prick Diaz before he takes us out. Let's get out of here. This is why Tommy prefers to work alone. When other parties are involved, there are too many variables, too many unknown egos that muddy the waters. But they are in this now, and the time for careful planning has passed. They must act before the Colombians can regroup. A surgical strike is called for. Lance and Tommy meet on the bridge at Starfish Island, furnished with M4s to rub Diaz out. Don't worry, Tommy, I'll cover you. Tommy didn't choose to come to the city. He was thrust here, a cast off not wanted by the family he stayed silent for for 15 years. Apart from Ken Rosenberg, Vice City didn't welcome him either. The first job he undertook for Sonny nearly got him killed, and he was left on the hook for it. But in solving that problem, he has come to understand this town 
the minds and the factions that run it, what makes it tick and the people to know to get things done. As Tommy weaves through the gardens of Ricardo Diaz's mansion, entering through the indoor swimming pool and up towards Diaz's grand office, Tommy knows what is going to happen. In moving on Diaz, he's opening a vacuum that he'll never be able to resist being sucked into. Diaz, I've come to take over your business. I trusted you, Tommy. I would have had you made. Say good night, Mr. Diaz. Tommy has taken out the man responsible for the drug bust. Lance has avenged the death of his brother. Vice City now has a vacancy. Tommy was never a man with big ambitions. He has always tried to keep his head down and do the job to the letter. The job he was sent to Vice City to do was to carve out a slice of the action for the Liberty City mob. But this town was run by a degenerate who got high on his own supply and left the castle doors wide open. Tommy's not found a slice by killing Diaz. He has found the whole pie. Tommy's got no ambitions to run this city, to be top of the pile. But here he is, with all the skills and knowledge from years as a wise guy. He sees all the moving parts and knows how to bring them together. Vice City is his for the taking. It doesn't take long for that news to reach liberty. Hello, Sonny. You never write me, you never call. Don't you want to be friends no more? Well, I've heard you've been busy, all right. Busy killing drug barons. Busy taking over. Don't forget about us, Tommy. Because I can assure you, I ain't forgotten about you. Tommy can't think about Sonny right now. The other gangs will quickly look to take ground in the wake of Diaz's death. Tommy needs to move fast. He assembles a team. His right-hand man? Lance, of course. Ken, his lawyer and fixer. And Avery Carrington, his advisor. Listen to me, the time to take over this town is now. It's all out there waiting for us. First, they make it clear to the storefronts and bars who they owe protection to now. Local business know Diaz is dead, and they're refusing to pay protection. My livelihood destroyed. It does not take long to get all Diaz's illegal lines of revenue back up and running. The protection, the drugs, cash starts to flow with which they retain some of Diaz's men as muscle and attract new ones to the cause. But all this money needs to be legitimized to spend it openly. It needs to be cleaned. What you need is a legitimate front, Tommy. Real estate, it's never done me no harm. Over the course of the next few months, Tommy goes to town buying any businesses he can muster the cash for. The boat yard, formerly ran by the Costa Ricans, was a bargain. The accounts can be doctored to clean cash, but also a place to safely dock and take in new inventory. Who are you? Your new owner. Buying up Maud Hansen's ice cream factory. It's a cash business, but can also aid in distribution of the product around the city. Those looking to buy have just got to listen out for the familiar tune, and if the cops get suspicious, the ice cream trucks can move on. Tommy purchases more legitimate fronts. The auto dealership can process stolen vehicles. This place seems perfect. We can get you anything. And if you see a car of your dreams, tell us. We can acquire it for you. The film studios can launder cash by exaggerating production costs on their porn movies. Whoa, now that's big. We're going to turn this place around. I'm going to make you rich. Kaufman Cabs is a cash business, and that cash can be inflated within the books. Our new management, the Mercedes gang, is going to make sure we get no trouble. This spurious profit incurs tax, of course, but at least their profit is now clean. That money can then be invested in other businesses. Businesses Tommy knows well. The Malibu Club, where the bright young things of Vice City spend their time. And the Pole Position Club, where the older and less bright do the same. Ah, uh, wicked, wicked, wanna get me a slice of that time? In these dealings and over the course of time Tommy has spent in Vice, he meets many people that both help 
and hinder his rise to power. Each has a story. You can watch those now as a member or patron, or stay subscribed and notified for their imminent release. It has been months since the fall of Diaz. The Vassetti gang has Vice City locked so tightly to their whim, no other gang can match them. Not the Cubans, nor the Haitians. Tommy all but eradicated the wannabes. The only gang that could is the gang from up north, Sonny and the Liberty City mob. Where's the goddamn money? Where's the goddamn stuff? And where's my gun? Are you new action? Before the death of Diaz, Tommy had only been concerned with fulfilling the promise he made to Sonny. You have my personal assurance that I'm going to get you your money back. But the moment Tommy took the throne, he had no intention of doing the bidding of the master that at the very least left him to rot for 15 years, and at worst, plotted to kill him. He was done with Liberty City, done with Sonny. Tommy could have perhaps given his old boss at least some of the money and drugs weeks ago, and knew it was only a matter of time before Sonny took action. Tommy has other ideas. He wasn't finished growing his empire. There is one more business Tommy wants to purchase. This one, more than any of them. It's not particularly profitable. It doesn't really hold any strategic value he could put his finger on. Its location, close to Haitian gang territory, was far from ideal. But it is a business that feels right to him, speaks to him from a simpler time. He knew shops like this well. The feel of the machinery, the smell of the ink, the print works in Little Havana. Mr. Vassetti? Ran by custodian Ernest Kelly. My old man used to work on these. I used to spend the evenings with him cleaning the rollers. I was going to follow him in his trade, but I lived a different life. For Tommy, the print works was an emotional purchase. But now he had it, he wanted to put it to work somehow. I'm thinking we might print something, a newspaper, a magazine. But in Ernest Kelly, Tommy would inherit the expertise and ambition to make the print works, in time, one of their most prized assets. I've always fancied printing money. I've been doing it on a small scale for years. Really? But we need some good quality plates. There's a counterfeiting syndicate already operating in Florida. With just rumors is all I've heard. Kent Paul can always be counted on to put meat to the bones of any rumour. They've got a shipping company down the docks. Uh, uh, the boss man would know when the plates are coming in next. The shipping officer... Oh, I talk, I talk! ...reveals that the plates are being flown into the docks and Tommy can intercept them. Grab the plates, lose any heat and make my way back here. I want green rolling off the presses five minutes after I get back, got it? But on his return... Tommy, some mob thugs said they'd come to take their cut. Said it was a Mr. Farello's money. Sonny Farelli? Yeah, that's the guy. Get him to the hospital. Sonny's inevitable retribution has started. Tommy, rip that guy a new asshole for me. First, Tommy needs to stop Sonny's wise guys. Taking from the businesses, from the Vassetti gang. He tracks them down and takes back what's his. And with a call from Lance. We got big problems. Come down here right away. The moment has arrived to face Sonny. He heads back to the mansion. Guys, we gotta make this final. We gotta leave no doubt that this is my operation. Mine! Ken, get the first run of counterfeit cash and put 20 mil in briefcases. He won't hand over real money, but maybe the counterfeit cash can confuse, distract, and buy time. Lance? You get the guys together. For Tommy, this represents the final hurdle before this city is truly his. The last threat to a peaceful reign and the space to focus on more growth and more prosperity. He had his base in this starfish mansion. He has the cars, the product, the tools and the men, his soldiers and his trusted captains by his side. Tommy! There's three mil in the cases. Get the damn cash. I trusted you, Tommy, and you disappointed me. But at least someone in your chicken shit organization knows how to do business. Isn't that right, Lance? Sorry, Tommy, this is Vice City. This is business. <laughs> Tommy knew he had to keep an eye on Lance. He was eager, hot-headed, and prone to error of judgment. Tommy never completely trusted anyone, but he did not expect this of Lance. 
Lance had lived in the shadow of his brother all his life, never the face of anything they did, forever the backup, and despite wanting to be a part of the Vassetti gang, he felt marginalized by Tommy, another cog in the wheel of a gang he helped form. Lance was disgruntled and easy to turn. It's not clear how long he's been turned or what information he divulged, but he is quick to put Sonny straight on the counterfeit cash. The real cash is upstairs in the safe. With Lance defected, and Ken better with white powder than gunpowder, Tommy takes arms and protects what's his, what he's earned, the family he formed. Tommy defends the safe from the incoming LC mob. No one to cover your ass now, eh, Tommy? With his arsenal of Max and M4s, Tommy takes out the Mafia men. Come here, you double-crossing piece of shit! Takes out the traitor, once friend. Pick the wrong side, Lance. And with his men almost depleted, Sonny joins the last of his traveling party. You took 15 years from me, Sonny, and now I'm gonna make you pay. Those 15 years were mine to spend. Sonny and his Liberty City mob are no more. That stupid prick, Lance. I don't think we're gonna be getting any more heat from up north either. Cause there ain't no up north anymore. It's all down south now. Tommy, baby! Ain't it just beautiful? A beauty Tommy now has time to absorb. Tommy and his crew control this town. Far from the airport where he first arrived, to the beach where he made his home, to the ports where they take their shipments, to the bars and the clubs where they can finally relax and take in what they've worked for. This is Tommy's town. This is Vice City. And before we return to Vice City in GTA 6, make sure to subscribe for more stories from both the 3D and HD universes. If you missed my story on GTA 3, hit the link on the screen now. See down in the description for my Grand Theft Auto playlist where you can binge every video on this universe. And thank you to everyone on the screen now who supports this work and gets to watch every video weeks in advance. See links to Patreon below or just press join now. I'm the Patient Wolf and this has been the story of Grand Theft Auto Vice City.